in three, two. Good afternoon. This is Chair Cheryl Pasteur, and I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. I now turn it over to Mr. Thomas, Vice Chair of the Committee. Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee, at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as re when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pasteur. Present. Ms. Rowe. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Ms. Causey. And Dr. Hager. Ms. Rosenberg. Dr. Hager, I just reached out saying that she never got a calendar invite for the meeting. I, I'm wondering if someone could, or Mr. Corns could send that over to Dr. Hager. If Tracy needs to do that, can you contact Tracy, please, to ask her to do that, Ms. Rosenberg? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pastor, I'm, I'm working on that now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. OK, well, Ms. Rosenberg, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Bazemore. Uh, present. Mr. Corns, our tech person. He's present. Thank you. He's present, yes. Thank you. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to myself to continue facilitating. Welcome, everyone. Uh, the first item on our agenda is information items. Sorry, the next item. Uh, and for that, I call on Ms. Pasteur. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thomas. I'm going to start by giving you the overview from the last May meeting and a few other items. That meeting was held on January 10th uh, at uh, um, January 10th, 22. And our next one will be next week, the 7th. So I'm going to first go through some the bills and remember that May doesn't focus on at all local bills. So these are all um, statewide bills. So the first one is House Bill 6-8, Senate Bill 4-0, Systemic Renovation Projects, funding, and it calls for funding regardless of the costs, from supplemental public school construction. House Bill 84, I'm going to go slowly enough so that if you're interested, you can look them up. House Bill 84, Senate Bill 119. This is Delegate uh, Ruth's uh, bill, and it's about crimes on school grounds. And that is a supplemental, it has a supplemental amendment to it, and Mabe approved it with that supplemental bill, uh, amendment, I'm sorry. Uh, and it explains uh, the application of what that means. Uh, what happens when there is an offense on ground. So it, it, it addresses students, visitors, parents. And the next one is Senate Bill 162, Cyber Safety Guidelines and Training. That also was approved by MABE with amendments. It's about the development, implementation, and reporting of cyber incidents. The next one is Senate Bill 136. This came up last year, as I recall, as well. Seizure recognition. 
And again, this is supported by MABE with amendments. And that calls for having at least two people on staff who can recognize a seizure versus any other thing that might happen to a student or staff, staff member, but knowing that this is a seizure. So there would be two people in each school who will be trained to recognize that. The next one is House Bill 146. MABE opposes this one. And that is, it's an education one, and it's about reportable offenses and student discipline. And it has alterations as well to it. Um, and that is that schools may be notified after a student is adjudicated, but then maybe not, that there is discretion about whether a school is going to be told uh, about any offense outside of that school that involves a student. And May really is pushing this, pushing that this one uh, be repealed, that um, schools ought to know the disposition of an offense. And MSDE is taking active measures to prevent illegal restraints and discriminatory restraints and putting children in seclusion. This is a bill that also came up last year, as I recall. Uh, the bullying report uh, for LEAs to MSDE, the date is March 31st. And this is a piece that I'm just going to put in for your information. I participate in strong schools Maryland, and welcome Ms. Causey. Ms. Causey has joined us. Uh, Strong Schools, Maryland, and I've had this discussion with Dr. Williams, uh, but this goes straight across the state, much to our chagrin, that when parents, average citizen goes into our website, we want them to be able to see that we are actively involved in blueprint for Maryland's future, that we are taking it seriously. So um, we will be working on our website. So when you go on the site, you will in fact see that um, Dr. Wistead is our coordinator and that we will be doing updates, not just on our website, but as well at our board meetings uh, and that is a, a, a strong move by Strong Schools of Mar Maryland, indicating that um, uh, we are actively involved. So know that's the case. Know that the governor right now has removed millions of dollars from Blueprint, but it's the law, so it will be reinstated. Um, and the primary, the, the, the two school systems that are primarily impacted by this, the Baltimore City and Prince George's County, the two systems that can least afford to have money removed from them. But um, we're sure our delegation will see that, um, from all of the LEAs, we'll see that that money goes back in. It hasn't been reappropriated because by law, the amount is set. So it will go back in. So that is my report from MABE and from Strong Schools, Maryland. Uh, Mr. Thomas, I thought I saw something pop up from Ms. Causey, or was it Ms. Rowe? I saw something pop up about the bullying report. Oh, that was from me. That was from Ms. Oh. Rowe. I'm sorry, what did you say, Ms. Rowe? Um, so the comment I wanted to make about that is that it's come to my attention that the, the digital bullying um, form that we're required to have on our website by um, the General Assembly for reporting purposes, parents are saying that when they try to log into that form and fill it out, that they're required to have a BCPS login ID to be able to fill out the form so that if they don't have one or if they don't know theirs, they're not able to fill out the form. And I, I wanted to ask Mr. Bazemore if he would look into the legal compliance of that 
and if the form should be available without an ID because there might be some people who want to fill that out who are grandmothers or whatever and may not even have a BCPS ID. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Yes, did you get all of that, Mr. Baysmore? If not, Ms. Rowe, will you please put that, uh, either send that to Mr. Baysmore, or put it in the it. chat. Ms. Rosenberg has it. All right, yeah, thank okay. you. We got all it. Right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Mr. Thomas. Thank you. All right, so the next item on agenda is new business, unless there are any other comments from board members. Any other questions for Ms. Pasture? Okay, then the next item on the agenda is new business, update on current bills. And for that, I call on Mr. Bazemore. Thank you, Vice Chair uh, Thomas and, and committee members. Uh, I have a, about 10 bills or so that I'm going to uh, present as information and the uh, uh, the members of this legislative committee can um, chime in on any of these individual bills that they're interested in uh, and we can have you know further discussion on them but uh, just going to report out informationally on these on these uh, 10, 10 bills. Um, the first bill is Senate Bill 55 and that's uh, Baltimore County Board of Education Retention of Council. Uh, this bill is being sponsored by uh, Senator Charles Sidnor, who is local, and it's authorizing the Baltimore County Board of Education to retain counsel to represent it in legal matters affecting the board and to contract for the payment of a reasonable fee to the council. The second bill is Senate Bill 95. This bill is uh, public schools anaphylactic food allergies, guidelines and requirements. And this is Senator Clarence Lamb, a uh, local senator as well. And this is this bill is cross filed with House Bill number 154. It is requiring each county board of education to adopt, implement and publish certain guidelines in accordance with the Maryland State School Health Service guidelines to reduce the risk of exposure to anaphylactic caus causative agents in classrooms and common areas, requiring each county board to publish the guideline on its website, requiring each public school to develop a system to disclose reasonably in advance the foods to be served in the school and the major food allergens contained in the food. Thank you, Mr. Basemore. Um so if we would like to have conversation or make motions on these bills, should we wait until you present all the bills and then have that conversation or go bill by bill? Um, I would leave that up to uh, the chair and the vice chair the, to determine that either way is, is fine. In the okay. past, Mr. Thomas, we wait and get through it so we can get through all of them and ask committee members to just make note and hold. I saw one on um, 55. Uh, so that we can just spend that time um, when we get to it to cover anyone that anyone wants to make discussion so we can make sure we get through all that are relevant to us. So Thank you. Ms. Rowe, if you would just hold that and we'll come back. Mr. Thomas will come back to you on that. Yes. Thank you. You can continue, Mr. Bazemore. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the third bill is Senate Bill 124. This one is also cross-filed, uh, House Bill 150. This is public schools grant program to reduce uh, to re to reduce and compost school waste. Again, this is a local uh, filed bill by Senator uh, Shelley Hedelman. And uh, it's establishing it wants to establish the grant program to reduce and compost school waste to to award grants to county boards of education and public schools to develop and implement programs for reducing food waste and to establish composting of pre and post consumer waste and requiring the Maryland Association for Environmental and Outdoor Education to review uh, the, the grant applications and select recipients to be awarded grants by the State Department of Education. Our fourth bill is Senate Bill 414 Again, uh, local senators uh, Charles Sidnor has filed this bill, and this bill is uh, Baltimore County Board of Education 
membership and election of officers. So this bill is seeking to alter the number of members serving on the Baltimore County Board of Education and requiring the Baltimore County Executive to appoint a member of the County Board from a certain list of nominees within a certain period of time. Altering the processes of the Baltimore County School Board Nominating Commission to require the commission to forward a list of nominees to an appointing official and and also altering the quorum requirements for election of the chair and vice chair of the county board. Uh, fifth bill is a, a, a joint resolution. Um, in this SJ7 and this bill is. Uh, by Senator Reddy, he's not local. Um, it says the support of parents rights to bring grievances to county boards of education. Uh, supporting parents rights to peacefully assemble, speak freely and petition the government, including county boards of education on any topic and condemning intimidation of a parent who is expressing these rights. And this bill has been assigned to the uh, Education, Health and Environmental Affairs Committee. Uh, next is Senate Bill 528. And uh, this is uh, by the uh, Senator Penske actually um, filed this bill and it's a uh, Climate Solutions Now Act of 2022. Uh, this is requiring the, the state to reduce statewide greenhouse gas emissions through the use of various measures, including the alteration of statewide greenhouse gas emission goals. The establishment of a net zero statewide greenhouse gas emissions goal, the development of certain energy efficiency and electrification requirements for certain buildings and requiring electric companies to increase their annual incremental gross energy savings through certain programs and services. Um, the next bill is House Bill 192. And again, this is the Baltimore County Board of Education. This is a local bill by a local delegate, uh, Delegate Eric Ebersol. Um, authorizing the, the student member of the Baltimore County Board of Education to vote on capital and operating budget matters. OK, um, HB 226, public school self-contained special education classroom the use of video recording devices, and this is this bill is sponsored by Delegate Michelle Guyton, again, a local delegate here in Baltimore County. Um, this bill would require county boards of education beginning in 2022-2023 school year to install a video recording device in each self-contained special education classroom, providing for the installation, operation, notification and use of a video recording device and the viewing use and confidentiality of system recordings also requiring the school administration to notify the appropriate law enforcement agency on receipt of a complaint of alleged neglect or abuse of a student under certain circumstances uh, hb 314 uh but uh, this is the this is a county board of education voting members requirement. Uh, this is delegate Novotny who introduced this bill. It's requiring beginning January the 1st, 2025, that a county board of education have an odd number of members who are eligible to vote on each matter before the county board and authorizing a county board if it does not have an odd number of members and a, and a vote coming to the board cannot be postponed or rescheduled to select a certain individual in a certain manner to vote on a matter before the county board in order to comply with the requirement to have an odd number of voting members. Uh, HB 347 is a county uh, sponsored bill as well. Uh, this is Delegate Boltler, Delegate Mangione, Delegate Metzger, Delegate uh, Impelaria have sponsored this bill. It's titled Baltimore County Superintendent Election and Recall Procedures and Compensation. 
This bill would establish a process and procedure for the election and recall of the county superintendent of the Baltimore County Public School System, providing certain qualifications in terms of office for the county superintendent and establishing minimum and maximum compensation levels for the county superintendent of Baltimore County. HB 476, these are the last two. Uh, HB 476, uh, Baltimore County Board of Education, member appointments and terms and election of officers. Again, um, Delegate Eric Ebersol, local delegate here in Baltimore County, and Delegate Kathy Forbes as well has have co-sponsored co this bill. It's altering the process for appointing certain members of the Baltimore County Board of Education and altering the term of the elected and appointed members and the process for electing officers of the county board. And lastly, HB 504, collective bargaining, public school employees authorization to strike. This um, delegate is, is not from Baltimore County, it's Delegate Acevedo. Um, he's authorizing certain public school employees to engage in a strike. So that concludes all the bills that I wanted to bring as information and I'll turn it back over to uh, Vice Chair uh, Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Um, I see that Ms. Rowe indicated in the chat that she'd like to um, have a conversation in motion for Senate Bill 55. So, uh, Ms. Rowe, I turn the floor to you. Yes. Um, so we have had um, our attorney draft a legal memo that clarified some of the questions that we had before concerning SB 55. And considering that we are the only school system in the entire state that has to have the county attorney's permission to hire our own legal counsel and that that state law seems to be a reflection of the county charter and our attorney's opinion is that the county charter does not apply to our school system i think it's appropriate that the state remove that requirement from state law so that we can be like every other school system in the state and so um I move to send SB 55 to the full board with a recommendation to support this bill um, for the full board to consider that. Second, Ms. Second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rowe, for the for the motion, and thank you, Ms. Causey, for the second. Um, Ms. Rowe, could you please put that in the chat as well, just so that uh, Ms. Ros Rosenberg has that? Sure. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion on this bill? Um, on the motion, uh, go ahead, so, Ms. Peshwar. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Peshwar, you, you muted yourself, I think, by accident. <laughs> thank you. All yeah. right, I um, support this uh, and, and do think that it, it should go to the full body with recommendation uh, to support uh, clearly in oh so many ways we need to uh, have some autonomy in what we're doing uh, in terms of our law person. And uh, I'm sorry. Um, and it will certainly put in alignment uh, a number of things that have um, recently caused us to have angst, I'll say. So I think this is a good thing. Uh, it does, as Ms. Rose said, put us in alignment with everyone else. It does not change any other state laws, but we still must follow them. But at least we will have some say in our representation. So I will definitely support taking this to the board. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. I'm just going to restate the motion uh, so that all board members have a clear understanding. Uh, Ms. Rose's motion, motion was, I move to recommend SB 55 to the full board with the support of the committee. And I'll now call on uh, Ms. Causey. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, would Ms. Rowe like to speak to her motion? I know she was busy writing it, but I wanted to um, wait in, in case she wanted to do sure. that. Yeah, Ms. Oh. Rowe, would you like to give a comment or a speech I motion? Mean, I, I think what I said is, is the encompassing. It, the main point is that every single uh, school system in the state 
can hire their own attorney except Baltimore County. And the statute in state law that applies to Baltimore County seems to be a reflection of the county charter, which our attorney said in the memo response to the OIGE report is something that is not even appropriate to be in the county charter. And even if it is, it doesn't apply to us anyway because we're not a county agency or a county board. And so I think that Sidner's, Mr. Sidner's bill, Senator Sidner, sorry, is appropriate because it puts us on an even footing with the rest of the school systems in the state. And it's just, there's no appropriate reason for us not to be able to hire our own legal counsel. And I think that it's just important that we keep the lines of, you know, who the school system is subject to very clear. And it's very clear that we are not a county board. We're not a county agency of any kind. And we need to be only subject to the General Assembly and the state laws. And so this is an appropriate bill because it's just putting us on an even footing with the rest of the state. Ms. Rowe. And next, Ms. Calsey. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, I absolutely support this motion based on the policy analysis that was presented to the Policy Review Committee. Uh, indicating, as Ms. Rowe said, um, that Baltimore County is the only school district in the state of Maryland that does not have um, the authority to hire its own counsel. And also, uh, based on the board's counsel's recent um, advisory opinion, um, and uh, also the Public Works LLC consulting company that did an operational efficiency and effective performance review. Um, they had several recommendations relating to the board utilizing board counsel uh, in order to um, increase our effective governance and oversight and in development of um, appropriate policies and uh, also in um, a variety of other board governance issues. So I absolutely support this motion and I think it, uh, I think it would be very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Causey, and I'll speak to the motion as well. I, I think this motion is a great motion. Uh, as was previously stated, uh, this is something that every jurisdiction, every other jurisdiction besides Baltimore County has in the state of Maryland. So I, I completely support this motion as well. Okay, Ms. Rosenberg, uh, or are there any other comments from committee members, concerns, questions they want to ask before? Yeah, Mr. Thomas, questions? before you go, let me see. Has Dr. Hager joined us? There was a request to join. Is Ms. Dr. Hager on this call? Okay. Uh, all right, I hear nothing, but I, there was in the chat a request to join. So, all right, continue. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Corns, if, if there is a request from um, Dr. Hager, she may be trying to join. So just if possible, please admit her. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're good to move on to the vote. Okay, all right, Ms. Rosenberg, can you please call the roll? I think you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> you're muted, uh, Ms. Rosenberg. Okay. Well, it, you know, we can move forward with. Uh, Sorry about that. Oh, no. Oh, perfect. Yes, Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Pastor. Yes. Ms. Rowe. Yes. Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. So that motion has uh, four votes in favor and it will go forward to the full committee. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Causey. Thank you. I had a question in general regarding um, the work of the Legislative Review, um, Re Legislative and Government Relations Committee um, and also the full board. Um, we know that some of um, these bills and legislation can move quickly. So what is the process or what process can be defined in order to communicate to um, the Baltimore County delegation or whomever would be the appropriate person of action taken by this committee um, and the full board? Is that Ms. Pastor as the chair, do you work with the board chair to get that information to the legislature? Um, you know, because I know some of these things are time of the essence. So I was just curious how that mm -hmm. works. Yeah. Um, May I speak to that? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so after the board uh, votes on it, um, certainly Ms. Hen through Mr. Baysmore um, will apprise whoever the, the person, the author, and um, if Mr. Baysmore wants to say anything else about it, because sometimes they are awaiting a response from us. I know that Senator Sidnor certainly will be um, anxious to hear because he had indicated if we did not want it, he would withdraw it. Um, so yes, that's a good question. And Mr. Baysmore will certainly get that information. Mr. Baysmore, have I misspoken in any way? No, no, ma'am. And thank you for that, um, uh, Ms. Causey, because the, the, the legislature does move fast. Um, it, they have four months to get a lot of, lot of work done. So I would just say to the board, that uh, when you move these forward, as soon as they're done, uh, have you know, Tra you know, Tracy write up the letter, um, contact me, and then we will try to get the letter of support directly to the sponsors. Also, right, yes, ma'am. Also, um, there's a new way to uh, submit written testimony where 48 hours before the actual hearing date. You can sign up. There's a small window from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., 48 hours before the bill hearing, where you can upload the um, the testimony as well. So I'm going to try to get two bites of the apple because things are moving so fast down there that, especially with these local bills, if we can either get it to the bill sponsor or make sure that um, someone from the board have to sign into the MGA between and 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 upload the um, the, the support letter between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., 48 hours before the bill. So letting me know as soon as possible, I'll do that legwork, you know, figuring out the time frame and who the uh, bill sponsor is and who the email it to, because a lot of times there's staff there that that maybe we can, you know, the chief of staff that we can email it to because uh, the senator may be on the floor or having hearings and things. But that's a good question, Ms. Causey, because we do we do want to make sure that, you know, um, we get these down in a timely way. OK, so that we 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 are not going at cross purposes. Um, you are the staff person. So once we vote on it uh, and and as you indicated, you just indicated the process. So Tracy will lay it out. You will see that the sponsor, um, Mr. Baysmore, is aware and has that information. All of you in terms of going on my MGA, whatever it is, uh, and you have to create that profile. I did send out that information to the board members, but I will send it out again uh, this evening so that if you want to testify, if you're going to write something, you want to speak, you should go um, through that mechanism. If you're going to a particular area committee, the chair invites people to the committee. But if you are interested in testifying delegation or full, then you have to go through that process. And as Mr. Baysmore said, 10 to 3, uh, 48 hours in advance. But I will send it out again just in case even though i asked everybody to save it i will send it out again so you can set up a profile but so that we are always in sync you know i like speaking of perpetuity so that we're always in sync we go through and with our staff person to do that to make sure madam we chair, may i add may i add one thing to that madam chair you certainly may thank you and I just wanted just to remind the uh, legislative uh, members that when we approve a bill by the board, then whoever you designate to speak can literally go and sign up to speak and at a lot of time. And because the board have, has, has designated you as a spokesperson and, and has approved this by the board, you can testify saying I'm representing the board. But you also as individual members uh, can 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 sign up and testify, submit written testimony as well. But you always have to qualify it 
at the at you know at the top of your letter or, or whatever it may be and say I am not speaking on behalf of the board. I am speaking as a citizen, as a resident of Baltimore County. And so I just wanted to make sure that you know everyone was aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Basemore. Uh, I also have a question uh, before we go we had to miss Colisey. My question is, um, you know, since these are timely issues at the next Board of Education meeting during the Legislative Committee updates, um, I, actually, I don't believe we have them in the next meeting. So, Ms. Ms. Pastor, would it be possible for us to add to the agenda, you know, this pol this board, this bill that we have submitted a favorable report for, um, for the next meeting of the Board of Education? Yes. OK, awesome. And if we were to also you know, approve any other bills today, we could add those as well. Uh, great. And Ms. Rowe put in the chat that she believes the chair has to designate who will be speaking on behalf of the board. Um, and I just wanted to clarify it uh, with Mr. Bazemore. Is, is that the case? Yeah, you, yes, I think that is the um, uh, um, chair, chair, chairwoman Hen would make that designation. Awesome, thank you. Um, Ms. Causey has another question, so Ms. Causey. Thank you. So I just wanted to. Oh, wait, before, I'm sorry. Before Ms. Oh. Causey says that, just on that point, I thank um, Mr. Baysmore for saying that. Ms. Rowe got him to uh, to saying that. Again, you we always want to make sure things are clean. That makes it clean. She is the the chair is the spokesperson. Just in case somewhere down the road someone gets confused and thinks otherwise. So the chair is the spokesperson. So thank you. I think it was Ms. Rowe who um, first pointed that out. I'm sorry, Ms. Causey. I just wanted to make sure. Perpetuity. Go ahead, Ms. Causey. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Pester, for making making it clear. I appreciate that. Um, so I had two other short questions. One is, um, you know, the full board will be updated as well uh, before things are sent to um, outside officials um, is a question. And also, um, would the full delegation get it? it um, <clears throat> because what if we, uh, the board votes to not support uh, a bill, then it would be important for not just the, for everyone to know at the same time. Great questions. Uh, Mr. Basemore? Yes, ma'am. Um, that would be the case too. If, if you're for a bill, it's the same process. And if the board votes um, um, not to support a bill, it's the same process, and when it's a local bill, we would um, that there, is. You're, you're right. It would go to the um, uh, like in this case, like Senator Sidnor uh, uh, SB 55, but it will also go to the delegate, the our Baltimore County delegation. And so, yes, we will send your, we will send that to to both. Thank you. Okay. Um, I actually would like to also make a motion. So um, I move to recommend Senate Bill 0095 and House Bill 0154, Senate Bill 124 and House Bill 150, and House Bill 476 to the full board with support of the committee. Um, I'm sorry, it's in, and it's in the chat, but it is in black text. So if you want to highlight it in the chat, um, um, please that do if you need to read it better. Can we separate those out and vote on them separately with the title yeah. so that we know what we're voting on? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll restate my motion then. Um, I move to recommend Senate Bill 095 and House Bill 154 to the full board with support of the committee. That's the first listed. Okay, and which, what's the title of that bill? Public Schools Anaphylactic Food Allergy Use Guidelines and Requirements. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Does anyone want to speak to the motion before um, I speak to the motion? OK, since, well, since I was the sponsor, I'll speak to it first. Um, I think this motion, I mean, we, all Board of Education should adopt, implement, and publish guidelines that relate to exposure to anaphylactic causative, causative agents. Just today I was in my a school lunch line and, uh, you know, I was just, I was talking to our cafeteria workers about how they begin to recognize, um, you know, who has allergies and who doesn't. And I think we need to make sure that there are guidelines and requirements in place for every school system, um, including ours. Not saying that we don't though. Okay, Ms. Causey, yes. Thank you. I was going to ask, um, I believe there's already uh, procedures in place for um, safeguarding students that have food allergies. Um, so, I don't have the bill 
in front of me? It, do they have, have they provided information that why this is needed, that in fact that we don't have safeguards? Mr. Thomas? Yes. Uh, may I speak to that? Yes, you may. Yes, Ms. Becker, please do. Okay. Um, Ms. Causey is correct. However, the difference is that they have found that in some cases, if there's no one who can recognize a seizure or there's someone who is prone to that, uh, having to take a parent, having to come in, take a child out on the parking lot, if there's something or somewhere outside of the building, if there's an issue, in addition to which they, all schools do not have. And this is one caveat that makes it different. This is saying that every school must have two people who are trained because people have mistaken seizures um, other things for seizures, that they are particularly trained in recognizing a seizure and what to do in, in that regard. Doesn't have to be the nurse, but it has to be two people in each building that who recognizes what a seizure is versus something else. Thank you, Ms. Pesturer. Mr. Basemore, do you have anything to add to Ms. Pesturer's explanation of the bill? Uh, well, there's a, a few other things in, in, in the bill um, that says it will provide information to parents about 504 plans and their applicability at applicability to students with uh, allergies. And it's going to the bill will also designate school areas that are food free. It will designate tables in the cafeteria to be used by students with with allergies that are free of foods containing the major food allergens. So there's a number of other items that, as Ms. Pastor said, that the bill brings out that we currently don't do not uh, provide, and uh, it gives some um, other needed guidelines uh, around allergies as well. Thank you, uh, Mr. I'll, I'll go to your question in a moment. Uh, Ms. Causey said that she does not see legislation attached to board docs. Uh, Ms. Causey, there should be uh, under today's meeting uh, section three new business update on current bills. Um, there should be an attached document that has this and there's a link to the legislation in that chart of documents. Um, so I'll come back to you after Ms. Causey, after Ms. Rowe asks her question and make sure that you have access to that. Uh, Ms. Thank Rowe? you, Mr. Thomas. I see uh, that link now. It was a table. Okay, Got thank it. you. You're welcome. Okay, awesome. Ms. Rowe, uh, you're next. So one of the other things that's um, to consider for this is that when all the schools in our system switched over to free meals for all students, Students no, ha no longer have to key in a number to get their meals, but the data that was obtained by keying in that number allowed the person who was cashing the child out to look at their tray and to see if they had allergies and allow them to make sure that none of those things were on their tray. And so um, I know that Baltimore County Public Schools is aware of that and has been working on that issue, but I think part of the impetus for the state law is that CEP is sort of taking hold statewide and if you don't have a method to do that, and, and with CEP there's no longer a, a food cashing out reason, that there needs to be some other way of tracking that so the cafeteria personnel know which children are allergic to which foods. And so there's that slight process change in our operations and other school systems operations that I think also was part of the motivation for this law. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. And I would just add uh, that uh, May uh, supports this bill as well. Thank you. Uh, one other, Ms. Rowe just said was kind of what I was trying to allude to earlier with uh, my encounter in, the, in, in, in our cafeteria. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions or comments, then um, Ms. Rosenberg, can we call the vote? Voting on the motion for Mr. Thomas to take SB0095 and HB0154 to the full board. Mr. Ms. Pastor. Yes. Ms. Rowe. I'm sorry, the motion is to take it to the full board with a positive recommendation, right? Sorry, yes. Okay, uh, yes. Sorry. Ms. Causey. Yes. Did we get Mr. Thomas? Thank you, yes. And we don't have Dr. Hager, right? right? No, not at the moment, I believe. Okay. Thank you, so the motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you.
Uh, next, uh, I move to recommend Senate Bill 124 slash House Bill 150 to the full board with support of the committee. And that bill is titled uh, Public Schools Grant Program to Reduce and Compost to Reduce and Compost School Waste. Second. Thank you, Ms. Fastor. Can I uh, have a question about that bill? Yes, please, please ask. Um, Mr. Bazemore, can you just go over um, again what what that bill requires of school systems and does MAPE support that bill? Yes, uh, MAPE, MAPE supports it. And uh, let me bring it up. Let me just point out while Mr. Tom, Mr. Mm. Bazemore is looking for this, that I send out, so this was, some of these were sent out before. If you just try to keep um, track of my made notes to you, so to the full board, so that you will see them because they won't come up. Some of them will come up after I send you my made notes. So you can always go back to the notes that I send out after a meeting um, and see where they are because these will I will send out, but they may come back up with something else having happened to them that I will report at the next meeting. So like the ones that I read to you today from my made report, they will come up, might possibly come up at the next um, legislative and government relations meetings. So just know I send them out as soon as I get them. I appreciate that. I read everything you send out. It's just hard to hold it all in your head. In the I meeting. know it is. <laughs> I know. I know. And I, I, I appreciate I'm not as, and I know not it as is, young as Mr. Thomas. <laughs> I, try to, I try to get it out of my head. That's why I try to send it out as soon as possible so that it's also in your heads as well. But I, I do understand that. I just wanted to say that just in case anyone missed that. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll pull out a few highlights of, of, of the bill and also uh, just to advise the um, legislative board and when it goes to the to the full board um, to check in with our food and nutrition team as well to get their opinion of, of the bill because all bills have any bill will have an impact on our school system and i believe there was some con concerns about um you know the price and the uh, uh the manpower to implement this so you may want to uh, check in with our food and nutrition folks as well but um this is this this bill is is wrapped around a grant program that the state wants to offer to schools uh, to reduce uh, comp, you know, and compost school waste within within our departments. The purpose of the program is to award grants to county boards and public schools to develop to develop and implement programs for reducing food waste and to establish composting of pre and post consumer waste. A county board or a public school may apply for a grant, may apply for a grant under this section, except as provided in paragraph two of the subsection. The Maryland Association for Environmental and Outdoor Education shall review the grant application and select grant awardees under the program. And so they give a list of eligibility requirements um, for the grant if, if, it's, if it's awarded. And, and again, what I would just um, recommend uh, to the board is to check with our food and nutrition department and uh, see if they have any issues or concerns with the bill. OK, I, and I just say that I seconded it because I wanted to have the discussion, but I hadn't. Yeah. I was at the meeting when um, Senator Hedelman presented it and actually she was sent back. There were certain several questions that um, were asked of her about this bill and she was going to go back and fine tune some of them, but she had a very um, healthy number of people who spoke 
on behalf of it. And it certainly is a good one. And the whole idea of getting the grants to do that was um, important. And again, she had people from various corners who spoke of the importance of doing this. Um, but there were some questions in terms of impact and thinking from LEA. So Mr. Thomas is correct. Um, I can certainly check on my end with um, Senator Hedelman to see where she is. I had the questions, so I can find out where she is on those. Um, and, and Mr. Um, Baysmore is correct that we might want to just bring it up and then let Dr. Williams and the system, you know, do their homework uh, in terms of that. But I will check with Senator Hedelman. But I wanted us to have this conversation because at the end of the day, it's a good one. And Mae also, and this was one, Ms. Rowe, this goes to what I just said about how I'm trying to catch trap my notes, try to catch up with each other, because this is one that I presented last week, last month in my Mae notes. And so here we are now with it for us to look at. So I'll get right on that and um, and then we'll see where we are with it. But she had some other work she needed to do on it. Thank you. Um, before I go to Ms. Collins and Mr. Ray, they both have questions in the chat. Uh, if we were to move forward with a favorable report, would it be possible for us to have that information from Dr. Williams prior to the board's full board, full board vote? Um, I'd have to get to Dr. I mean, Senator Hedelman first, gotcha. because even before Dr. Williams talks to food service, I need to, we need to know exactly where she is. I don't know what all that she's handled all of the questions that her committee asked of her. So I will reach out to her in the next few days to do that or in the next day or so to do that. Incredible. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Causey and then Ms. Rowe. Thank you. So I had a couple quick questions. One, I was wondering, um, Ms. Pasture, um, with the table that's attached to board docs, is it possible to add another column and um, have staff uh, put in the notes, such as MABE supports, MABE opposes, um, also sometimes MABE can support with amendments, um, <clears throat> where as things move along, that when it comes to the committee, we have the most recent um, information you know, all in one place. <clears throat> so okay. that's the question. I, and yeah, um, again, when I am looking it up now, but when I give that, send that report out, I always tell you what Maeve's position was on it. But as Ms. Rose said, just trying to keep it all together. So I'll, I'll try to circle back and make sure that that's out there for you. But I do give that when I give that report, I tell you, because it's my maid report. So I tell you how maid stood on it. But yes, I will I will circle back and make sure that um, we do that. I'm looking at my notes now. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. And my other question was, I looked at the bill that's attached and I don't see any fiscal notes. Um, because one of the things we, of course, that is one of Babe's um, priorities is to not have legislation that does not provide sufficient funding for the school systems to enact it. Um, so that's a question. Are, are there fiscal notes? Uh, Ms. Causey, in the bill language itself, it does say that the governor shall include in the annual budget bill an appropriation of at least $500,000 for the program. Yes. Um, that may not have answered your question fully. Um, if well, that's I, helpful, but it doesn't indicate what an estimate of the cost is to the school system. And I'm looking at, at my notes, and yes, that um, is uh, one of the things that needed to be fleshed out. So yeah, she's right that there's still that question, and how do you actually come to that question? the answer to that question. So that will be one, Ms. Causey, that I will ask Senator. Edelman. And I would be willing to support sending it to the full board with the approval of the committee. Um, and then based on any additional information at the time, the board could consider um, its support or 
for this bill. Does that make sense? It, yes, Ms. Cosby, that makes sense, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rowe, your question? So maybe uh, Ms. Pesher, Mr. Baysmore could clarify, but it sounds like this bill isn't something mandating that every schoolhouse do composting, but that the schoolhouse can apply for a grant to have a, an instructional program for composting that's connected to food services. So is this an instructional thing or is it just a grant to do it? Because it seems to me that there was some language in there that made me think that it was an instructional program. Uh, do you want to speak first, Mr. Baysmore? Do you want me to speak on it? Uh, you can speak, Madam Chair. Thank OK, you. uh, you're, you're correct. This is not mandating every school system, every school system to do this um, or every school in that system um, to do it. Again, you bringing up things that uh, UM is causing that need clarification. So I'm going to say that I'm going to abstain on it because I'm looking at my notes, I'm looking at this, and there's still some questions that need to be answered. It's going to be here for a moment. So, so we, I, I would like to, I would like to move to amend the emotion that we send it to the full board without recommendation, and we can process all the new information in the full board meeting. Thank you, uh, Ms. No Rowe. No pressure, Ms. Rowe, on me to get that those answers. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank if we don't know all the information, then I think I'm more comfortable voting to send it to the full board without recommendation than to send it with positive when we can't answer our own questions. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Rowe. Uh, I will second your motion um, to, to, for that amendment to, to do that. Uh, if, if we can have unanimous consent on that matter instead of taking a roll call vote, um, if there's anyone in opposition, please state it now. I am. You're in opposition to the amendment. I am only because I won't have, I, I can't guarantee as I sit here on Thursday that by Tuesday, I can, Tony, Mr. Baseball <laughs> and I can fill in those gaps. And that will be time where people are gonna say, the same thing and Ms. Rowe and Ms. Causey are going to ask those same questions which are germane to information and I, I would like to think I'll have it but I can't guarantee that as I sit here because I have to work on Senator Hedelman's schedule who is in session. Thank you. So with the amendment this uh, motion would read, I move to recommend Senate Bill 0124 and House Bill 0150 to the full board without recommendation. Okay. Um, and yeah. Ms. Rowe, if you're comfortable, we could strike um, the language that would, you know, require. Oh, it wasn't my intention to make that part of the amendment. That was by way of explanation. Okay, so. I put in chat the yeah. word of the amendment. Let's to amend the motion to send to the full board without recommendation. Um, and this will be sent to the full board on at the, the, Tuesday, the next Tuesday's meeting. Um, Okay, Ms. Rosenberg, can we take a vote on that then? The vote to amend to take the SB 124 and HB 150 to the full board without a recommendation. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um, are we voting on, we're voting on the amendment to just to add without a recommendation right that now? Is. To take it to the full board without a recommendation. Are we voting on the motion as amended or just the amendment to the motion? What is your amendment? What's uh, to, the amendment? The amendment oh. is to strike support of the committee and add without recommendation. Okay, yeah, because that was not in her original motion. Yes, that is what, on what we're voting. Okay, the yeah, we're voting on the amendment to the motion. On the amendment to take it to the take the bills to the full board without a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the amendment first and then we'll vote on the motion as a whole. Right, that's what she, Ms. Rosenberg Okay, said. perfect. We're voting on the amendment. Yes. Ms. Thank Rowe. You. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Cosie. Yes. Ms. Pastor. Yes. Now, may we, is there any discussion before we have a motion on the, before we vote on the motion as a whole, as amended? Hearing none, uh, Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll. Ms. Rowe. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Causey. Yes. Ms. Pastor. Um, staying. 
Thank you. OK, moving on to the next motion that I, I, I made previously. Uh, I move to recommend House Bill 0476 to the full board without su with support of the committee. Sorry, I'll restate that. I move to recommend House Bill 0476 to the full board with support of the committee. And I'll put that on the chat to make it easier. And the name of the bill is? And of the bill is Baltimore County Board of Education, member appointments and terms and elections of offices sponsored by delegates Ebersol and Forb. Oh, Ms. Causey has a point of inquiry on the result of the last vote. Ms. Causey? Thank you, Mr. Thomas. So there were two votes in favor and one abstained. Uh, but no, based what, on the aren't there three? There three, were three votes. votes in favor. Three votes in favor, so that passes. Yes. Okay, passes. thank you. Thank you for your point of inquiry. Okay, I'll restate my motion. Uh, I move to recommend House Bill 0476 to the full board with support of the committee. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. And I will be the first to speak on the motion and anyone else after uh, can speak the motion as well. Uh, the reason for me motioning bringing this motion forward is because I actually wanted to have a discussion on this bill um, before taking a full vote. And I was wondering if um, Mr. Bazemore could expand on this more. Um, altering the process for appointing certain members and altering the term of elected and appointed members. I was reading through the bill as a whole and uh, I wasn't understanding exactly the, the impact that this would have. So I just wanted to um, have Mr. Bazemore expand on that. Thank you. Let me I'll read this bill again for the purpose of altering the process of appointing certain members of the Baltimore County Board of Education, altering the terms of elected and appointed members and the process for electing officers of the county board and generally relating to the Baltimore County Board of Education. And so the bill actually explains uh, the current uh, process for elected members. Um, and then it goes on to give some definitions of, of, of the age requirements for members to be on the board, uh, the governor's appointment process. And so what they want to do is, and I'll, and I'll read it in section two, it says the governor shall appoint four members to the county board on a day that is after the date of the gubernatorial inauguration and before February 1st that same year. A member appointed in accordance with subparagraph of this paragraph shall begin their term on the date of the member appointed by the governor. A member elected to the county board shall begin their term on the date that members are appointed in accordance with this paragraph. In a gubernatorial election year, the county board shall elect a chair and a vice chair from among the members at the first meeting of the county board after the new term. Except for the student member, a, a member serves for a term of four years. Um, and it also talks about that an individual who files a certificate of candidacy for election to the county board may, may not seek appointment to the county board by the governor through nomination uh, to the, um, the commission. And it also have term limits. A member who has served three consecutive four year terms may not be elected or appointed to the school board until at least four years have elapsed since the end of the member's last term and that a member may not be elected to um, be appointed to serve on the board for more than three consecutive terms. So that's pretty much pretty much it. Thank you, Mr. Basemore. And I know Ms. Rowe said that she can also uh, explain that. So Ms. Rowe, do you have anything to add about this bill? Yes, so the, the bill has a lot of information, but the substantive change is the idea that when we appoint members, and uh, Mr. Bazemore, if you can l like look at this, because I know bills get amended and changed sometimes in drafting and whatnot. But my understanding is that the intent is to make it so that when members are appointed, that they're not all appointed in the same year and that there's a bit of staggering to it. And that, so I, that intention was staggering, but I don't know how they figured that staggering out in the bill. I had um, spoken with one of the sponsors that the staggering was going to be so that someone, um, that two people are appointed every two years for four year terms 
just so that you don't end up with a situation where you have an entirely new board um, with no experience. But I'm not looking at the bill right now, so I'm not entirely sure where that is or how they worded it. But it's buried in the how we do everything now situation, which is mostly the, the same. But the change, I think, is when those appointments would occur. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rowe. And I wanted to just clarify something. Uh, every experienced member changing, except the student member of the board, because they would still be there for, for, for the next year. Um, They're just there for one year, right? Yeah, but they would be able to continue. Um, so my question, uh, Mr. Bazemore, can you verify that, that what, that's, the, that's what the bill is saying, what Ms. Rowe said? In my conversations with the um, sponsors, that, that is the intent, so okay. that you wouldn't have a wholesale turnover on on the board um and also i would think the um the term limits also are are, are new as well and the term limits uh that are changing what were the previous term limits i think right now a board member could, could just run um there's no limit there's no term no. limits how many times the board there's a term there's there a term, term limit there's there a term. Is. Mm -hmm. okay Three okay. seconds. Then you have to be out if you want to come back for another. You have to be out for a full term and then come back. Okay. So that actually the is, is the same. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see Ms. Calls you typing in. Oh, Mr. Basemore, are we going to say something? Sorry. No, no, I was just thanking for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Calls yes, your point of inquiry is recognized. Could. Um, could uh, Ms. Pasture or uh, Mr. Bazemore, uh, for the record and for the public, explain the um, editing conventions for the bills? What do you mean, Ms. Causen? So Edit that things in bold are oh, what's oh, being oh, yes. inserted, yeah. things that are bracketed or what's deleted them. or yeah. struck through? Yes, if Ms. Pastor. Mr. Um, Baysmore explain it, but that's a good question. In bracket, yeah. you have the yeah, old, and then you have the correction. But go ahead, Mr. Baysmore. Yes, when brackets, when you see brackets, um, that that signifies that that language is being deleted, and then if it's capitalized, um, that's going to be language that's added when it's in bold and capitalized. But when it's in brackets, the, that's the um, language that's that's being deleted. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Uh, thank you, Ms. Causey, for the point of inquiry. Um, are there any more questions or comments before we take a vote? Yes, Ms. Causey. Thank you. So my question is the timing of the start of the board members, because on page um, two, it indicates that the governor is going to appoint four members to the county board on a day that is after the date of the gubernatorial inauguration and before February 1 of that same year. So what is the typical date of the gubernatorial inauguration? It's in uh, January. It's in January. Latter so January. Mm-hmm. So then it says in paragraph paragraph two, three, a member elected to the county board shall begin their term on the date that members are appointed in accordance with this paragraph. So that makes it dependent on the when the governor between January and February appoints uh, the appointed members of when, so it would vary from year to year when the elected members get sworn in and begin their governance? Uh, Mr. Bazemore or Ms. Pastor, would you like to answer that? Okay, Ms. Causey's take is mine. It's I'm, I'm um, baffled um, because it impacts how each board that is supposed to start in December with whom you're working. I, and I just haven't, had the opportunity or to delve into it further, but that's my reading and I've read it several times. 
um, and I was really going to ask you, Mr. Baysmore, to really help us get some very precise language and clarification on it. Because my worry is, even though I like the staggered idea so that we're not all awful on or whatever, um, but we also want to have smooth transitions primarily for the sake of the work we're doing. Um, Ms. Causey, I, I'm not speaking for you, but I'm thinking that's somewhere in your head in your question. Can I speak to that for a second? Sure, Ms. Rowe, please do. So I think part of the reason for it, uh, for doing it that way is because there's this idea that if you have the governor appointing members to the Board of Education and those appointments happen um, after the November election, then you could have a governor who is only going to be in office for a couple of months appointing members to the Board of Education after an election has already taken place. So the idea is like if you take this coming up season, for instance, we'll have an election, we have a governor who's at the end of his term, and the idea is that you would want the new governor elect to be the person appointing to new, the new board. Um, at least that's the opinion of the bill sponsors. Um, I, I don't really care which governor appoints because well, the nominating I commission sends it, but it is problematic to have the board entirely seated sometime in January because we start voting on a budget in January. So we can't like there's wording about elected members being seated in December and then voting to elect a chair and a vice chair in December. And then you can't do that if the elected members aren't seated in December. So there's actually conflicting wording in the same bill because you can't that they, they really need to work that out. Well, that and that Miss Ro, that's that's what I said in a shorter way, exactly that. Um, you have people coming while you're trying to do work and that becomes a problem. I, I It must be staggered, but we need to, there are other things that internally have to be changed. And I don't wanna see us do something new that they did when this board was formed, this hybrid, because there were, a a number of things that they didn't consider taking right. old issues and just plopping them into the hybrid and they don't mix, they don't match. There was no thinking about it. It was, let's just have a hybrid board. Let's plop off some people and so that we can bring everybody on at the same time. I just want to make sure that I won't be voting for taking this forward because I would like Mr. Baysmore to have an opportunity. He is our liaison to get to, and anybody who wants to talk to their person, but we don't want to go from something that we've already put in our priorities. Mm -hmm. Remember, we did put that there, that we like that staggered, but we want it to work efficiently and effectively for the work. Ms. Rowe, you just identified areas, election of offices, budgets, et cetera. And still we're having people who are coming in and people going out. And if the bill passes that allows another appointed member appointed by the county executive, this doesn't state at all where that person seats. Like you, this is it's a little messy right now. You know, maybe we shouldn't send this. Maybe yeah. we should wait on this yeah. one. Well, he put it out, so it's up for us to have a vote. We can vote not to send yes. it to the mm -hmm. board yet. So let's do that. Let's move on. Let's take be cognizant of it, our time, please. Um, so, Mr. Thomas, I, I'm. I'm may may I ask a question, please? You said that. Oh, I'm Ms. sorry. Ms. I got in charge. Ms. 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 said that. Yes. Uh, please, if it's quick, yes, please. Thank you. I had put in the chat. I just wanted to add a comment. Um, my understanding is that um, what would be helpful, as Ms. Pasteur has pointed out, um, that there is staggering of board members. Some mm -hmm. districts have the electeds go in one election cycle, and then the appointeds go in the alternate election cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, cycle. Um, so that way you have a two year stagger between uh, potentially seven during an elected coming in new and four as appointed coming in new. 
Um, it would also address the issue of which governor does it because it, it would be um, <clears throat> in the middle of the governor's term. Um, I believe um, Ms. Rowe made a mention of it, but I believe it's problematic to have the governor try and within uh, four to six weeks of uh, inauguration appointing uh, because uh, that was uh, sort of the situation where before and there's a whole host of appointees that need to be considered by the governor um, after inauguration and so um, it takes considerable time to work all that through and if there's not a, a you know it, it, it could take months and months and months even though you say February in the bill um, I, I believe that that would be a challenge and and I don't think that this achieves what I feel would be helpful is to have electeds in one election cycle and the appointees in another election cycle and have them start a date certain in December, which also makes sense because that's when all of Baltimore County elected officials uh, are inaugurated, which is in December, um, the first to second week of December. Um, and so then all of the new elected officials um, essentially start their work together ahead of the operating budget cycle. Thank you, Ms. Cossie. Um, just to speak on this as well, uh, I'm also going to be voting against this this motion, even though it was my motion. I wanted us to have a conversation about this, um, and I, I think there are some concerns that I have with the bill as well, um, and I, I'd like Mr. Mr. Baysmore to be able to investigate that more, um, and, and, and maybe hopefully a, a, another bill can be introduced or this bill can be amended to align with our legislative priority uh, better. So uh, if there's no other comments, questions, uh, Hearing none, uh, Ms. Rosenberg. Uh, on, the you, motion, on the motion to bring House Bill 476 to the full board with committee recommendation. Ms. Rowe. No. Ms. Causey. No. Mr. Thomas. No. And Ms. Pastor. No. Thank you. And I, I also believe that it's it's really important for us to also have a conversation about House Bill 0347. Uh, um, but I, I know in the interest of time that might not be possible. Uh, this bill is about the election and recall procedures and compensation for the Baltimore County Superintendent. Um, Ms. Pastor, I'm going to ask for your advice to the chair of this committee. Uh, do you think that we should not have this conversation in the interest of time, or do you think it's important enough for us? Well, more than an interest of time, Mr. Baysmore can really speak to it, but it, for, from my understanding, um, right now it's still in that um, local delegation status. It's going through its own um, transition. I would like um, I would like to have Mr. Baysmore um, see where it is because it's not going to go quickly. Not certainly not before our next meeting. My suggestion would be to have Mr. Baysmore get some information, see where it is, and bring it back to the next meeting where it has already taken some steps right now unless I'm incorrect and I've looked at it um, because you can see in case you don't notice you can see the movement when you go online. Um, is that correct that it's really not taking significant movement so we have a little time on that? Mr. Basil? Uh, they, they have a hearing scheduled for uh, February the 10th. On this okay is that bill. with so is that delegation? This is no, this is the, this is the actual hearing. So you 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 probably do want to take this up and get a letter in. Or, or they, OK, to, all right. Know. So it has already gone. This this is a Baltimore County one. So you're saying it's been through delegation. It's been through committee. It's been through delegation and it's done Senate. Some some of there's there's this, no set order for these bills sometimes they'll go to a hearing first like in the case of this bill and then what they'll do is hear the testimony on this bill and then they will send it to the local jurisdiction to go through the county delegation and you know education subcommittee process okay so i've looked at this wanna... i don't see it i haven't seen it it move in any of those ways so I, okay so With, with whom have they had this discussion is what I guess I'm trying to get. If it has not gone through and been passed, 
in either committee, delegation, whether it's House, Senate, because I don't see it moving when I look at the chart. That's what I'm trying to get to before we just make a decision as to take to take it to the board for it. Let me look it up and see if something else has happened. So the, well, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'll, I'm not ready to vote on this. Well, February the 10th is the hearing, so. But which I, hearing? Remember, we went through that about. Ways and means. It's, it's good. Like, okay. like, so I that's the committee. Right? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate that there's no um, clear line with Bill. No, like sometimes they'll start off in a hearing like this one, February the 10th, and the ways and means where you want to be able to weigh in, send a letter, um, you know, a support or not. And then what they'll do is that that hearing is remanded back to the county local delegation. Right. Sometimes it goes through the local delegation first and then goes over to the hearing. Just depends on the timing of these bills and, and when they drop. So right. I got that. I'm simply was saying you just said the 10th. So that's its beginning point in this one. Because I looked at it, I, I follow those little dots. Um, so I, I, I agree, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I'm simply saying that I haven't seen that it jumped or did any of those other machinations and that this would be the first one. Um, okay, I, I, I'm gonna defer to you. I, it does. It just didn't look to me when I looked it up. I looked these bills up to see how they're moving. That this is the first one. That's next Thursday. Um, in terms of their presentation. Okay, that's all I can say about it. Is it's a newbie? I've it's a newbie. Yes, uh, Mr. Baysmore, would you be prepared to speak on this bill right now if we were to speak on it? Um. This bill was just dropped, so if you want to That's discuss it, you certainly can. You you don't have to make a decision today. Uh, and I'm but sorry, you, you wanna, said it you so much just, better. It just dropped. It just dropped. Wanna, <laughs> right. Okay. If you want to, you know, bet it and, and get, you know, you can certainly take it up later. And if you want to discuss it this evening, you can as well. So. Okay, Ms. Rowan's make a comment. Before Ms. Rowan makes her comment, I just wanted to say, um, so this bill, if we were to discuss it at the next board meeting, you know, we would have this bill would still be in action at that point. You, you believe, uh, from your knowledge, that you know this bill wouldn't have gone through the House delegation, um, already having a hearing and a vote from the House delegation before we were able to speak on it. It's 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 hard to say because things are moving so quickly down there and different. Right. Destinations. I don't want to make a statement like that and then the bill okay. comes up before our next meeting. So. Okay, Mr. Basement, thank it's you. Hard to predict. It's hard to predict. Okay, Ms. Arell. This is the most ridiculous, ill-conceived bill I've seen in a long time. <laughs> and the reason is because we have a board of education that has one employee, and now they're saying that we're not going to hire our one employee. And when you have elections, you have a superintendent who has specific education requirements that the state superintendent has to approve what happens if the people elect somebody who do not meet the state requirements of the superintendent? This is the most ridiculous, ill-conceived bill I have seen in a long time. And I just wanted to be on record saying that. And I, would not, put, I would not serve on a board that handed me a superintendent elected by the people that I now had to like. That like the board is not qualified to educate the superintendent on education. So we cannot have the people electing just any random person. To the, this is ridiculous. Ms. Crossy that. had a statement or, or, or something. She I'll move to oppose. I second that. Me okay. too. Uh, Causey well, maybe actually say it. Ms. Causey, yes. Can you please state the motion? That it was a question to Ms. Rowe. Did she oh, want yeah, to I make a to move oppose to oppose this it? Bill. Okay, so I, I'll restate the motion, second. Ms. Rowe. So, who seconded that? Was that Ms. Pastor? Or Ms. Was there a second? Ms. Pastor. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. So this was moved and seconded by Ms. Rowe. I, I, I already had this written out. I move to recommend House Bill 0347 to the full board with the opposition of this committee. Um, Ms. Rowe, does that satisfy your, your motion? Yes, that satisfies. Awesome. Uh, are there any more questions or comments? Um, <laughs> Ms. Rowe, would you like to speak to your motion again, or do you think you've already said what you, what you wanted to say? No, I think I've said plenty. 
Awesome. Okay, I'll speak to it as well. One of the concerns, one of the main concerns, uh, including some of the, the mentions that Ms. Rowe had, um, was the fact that the Baltimore County Superintendent would have to be a resident of Baltimore County for 30 days. Our current superintendent, you know, that we have came from Montgomery County. I, I don't I don't think we should be restricted to just the right minds in Baltimore County. There are 50 states in, in the nation. There are uh, 24 jurisdictions in Maryland. You know, we should be able to uh, find a superintendent uh, of, of the stature that we need in Baltimore County from anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. So, uh, so no, I, I also um, and I am fully in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I did, just in terms of that point, that means that we would have to ask all applicants if they were very serious to move to Baltimore County before yeah. they the make the application <laughs> before they get the job. Okay. 30 days. I was trying to be nice about the way it was, but thank you, Ms. Rowe, for just <laughs> jumping in there. Thank All you. right, let's go. Um, yes, Ms. Rosenberg, uh, are there no other comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, Ms. Rosenberg, can you please call the roll? Stating the motion to move HB 347 to the full board with the opposition of the committee. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Pastor? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you all. All right, so uh, if there is no other business, which I think we're running over, so hopefully there is no further business, and hearing none, there will be no more further business. Um, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting will be held on Thursday, March 3rd, 2022 at 4 p.m. Now, is there any further business again? Yes, I have further business. I want to thank you, Mr. Thomas, um, for leading this meeting this was a very productive and hefty meeting to be sure thank you you did it with a plum i appreciate it and as always i appreciate the thoughts and the comments of the committee and so we will bring those items up to the board for their um for their full vote and so i thank you thanks again mr thomas and Mr. Thank Baysmore, Ms. Rosenberg, and Ms. Causey, and Ms. Rowe, Ms. Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pastor. Ms. Causey also has a comment. Ms. Causey? Thank you. Um, I thought that we were going to address, um, excuse me, I'm finding it, Bill HB 0226. 0226. Oh. Self-contained special education classroom use of video recording devices. Yes, uh, would you like to address it um, now or at the next committee meeting? Well, I guess my question is, what is the path of the um, of the bill and when is it most um, timely to to address it? I I believe it's very important. I um, have listened to several of the parents that had prepared testimony um, in advance of the legislature and had spoken to this situation, and I think it's very compelling. Okay. Um, Mr. Bazemore, do you know where this bill is at at the moment? Yes, this bill had a hearing um, actually today in Ways and Means, so it's moving through the process. If if the board would wants to weigh in, I, I would encourage you to you know, move quickly because it's we it's 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 going through the process as we speak. Thank you. Okay. If, if you want to get a letter to the sponsor, the bill sponsor is a local delegate, delegate Guyton. So if if the board approves, supports, doesn't doesn't support, you want to be able to get a letter to her as as quickly as possible. Mr. Thomas. Okay. Yes, Ms. Rowe. I just want to state to the committee that um for different personal reasons, I need to recuse myself from any actions on this bill. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Uh, Ms. Causey, do you intend to make a motion for this bill today? Um, yes, I would move that the committee forward H bill, HB 02226 uh, to the board with a um, support. With favorable. Okay, is there any comment? Thank you. Any comment? Just for full disclosure, because we were given Mabe's position on all the bills that we have, we always want to do that. Mabe opposed this bill. Mabe opposed this bill. Okay. 
Um, Again, I sent that out earlier. This bill has also been out there for a while and the reasons that it was opposed because there are um, groups that oppose it because it it has vi- it's videotaping um, classes, et cetera. So it's also it's looking at all sorts, all of the children. And there are parent group, there are parent groups, and this is why Mabe opposed it, that mm-hmm. said then the rights and the privacy of the rest of the children. Somehow you can pull it out if you're feeling um, that there's something going on with your child, but it also exposes all of the children, faces, who they are, et cetera. And a number of parents had an organizations just as those who are for it um, have been opposed to it. Um, and I like Miss Rowe uh, because I've been involved in too many conversations and um, other things connected with both sides of this. I need to recuse myself um, from this because this is not a new bill. This actually, we actually talked about it last year and Mabe opposed it then. Thank you, Ms. Pashur. I have a question okay. to... Oh. Could I follow up, Mr. Thomas? Yes, yeah, please, yes. So currently we have cameras on buses and in other locations in the schools where if there are incidents, the uh, school administration or parents can request video uh, in those locations. So um, I can understand privacy concerns, but I also understand that when um, video is um, shown that the faces of students not involved in whatever situation they're researching um, are blurred. So um, I, again, I understand student privacy, but I also understand um, the situation where we have children who are nonverbal um, and there are situations that uh, where they come home injured um, and there is no clear uh, explanation of what happened. So not only does this protect students, but it also protects uh, staff and employees uh, where it could be indicated if there was a student to student situation or a student tripped and fall, it could be protective in um, showing what the facts of the situation are. Uh, you, Mr. Ms. Thomas, I'm with Ms. Um, well, I, I I was about to say something, and then I realized once you recuse, you you have to not speak on it. Um, so okay. Well, and I guess my question to Ms. Bashir, and and everyone has their own uh, um, uh, position on recusing, and you know you no, you know, I know what, what your reasons are, Ms. but Cole. I guess. So, Ms. Kazi, I'm just going to state publicly. So, my reason for recusing is I'm not asking I, that. I'm my my question. I'm just, I'm just going to state it so it's out there. My specific reason for recusing is because I have a very close family member who's in one of these rooms. Okay, so that that's that wasn't my question to ask. Why? Mine is a general question of we have very engaged um, board members and community members. And is it um, necessary for us to recuse because we've had wide conversations? Because I, okay, now I value, asking, no, I value okay. your input. Into but, what I said, which you don't have the right to do. I know why one okay. recuses oneself. Um, there is a reason I have had wide conversations, which is a very personal one. And I have the right then, when I say recuse, I know what it means. I tried to be nice by saying I've had widespread conversations because nobody needs to know my personal business. Ms. Rowe chose to say hers, I'm just going to stop there. So sometimes we have to trust that people know what they know and they do what they do for a reason that is above board. So I hope that's enough for you. But if it isn't, that's all I have. No, no, I trust your I trust your um, position and I value your your privacy. Um, and I just did want to say I value your input, but I understand that it's not possible at this point. 
So Thank I you. made a motion and there was no second, so. Oh, there was no second. OK, uh, well, I, I will second the motion because this is a bill that I'm, I'm interested in. Um, All right. um, I'm causing... going to then um, Thank you. Ask. I'm going to leave at this point because I do have to leave at this point and I've recused and I need to leave because there's two of us anyway um, that are recused. That only leaves two of you at this point. So. So that's you have that, said goodbye, that Mr. Thomas. You said goodbye. Um, okay, so now I'll, 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 end, I'll, this was a courtesy to yes. pull this back because we should have started this earlier. Okay, I, I, I will actually withdraw my second. Um, if that's okay, because we don't have a, we wouldn't have a quorum to even even vote on the topic, Miss um, Causey. Uh, is that okay? I think it's appropriate that we will move to adjourn since we won't have a okay. quorum. Thank well, you, Miss Causey. Know that if you if we want to do this this is not speed or alacrity um in terms of legislation i i heard mr base most comments but know that you always have the right okay i'm trying to not be emotional about this because this is an emotional issue for me but you certainly have the right um to as a member speak to this always anyone does so if 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 that's where you are, I would really encourage you to use that right and to do that and it not be about time or number because it's an important issue. And I, I think voices need to be heard. I appreciate your um, clarification, Ms. Pester. Thank and you, if Ms. you need, I'm going to put out there the information again if you need it about how to get on. OK. Oh, I, I already saved that, so thank you. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pestro. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bazemore. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rosenberg. Thank you, everyone who's here. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Pestro, for letting me lead this meeting. Um, since there is no further business, uh, thank you to our attendance, our audience members as well who are watching. Uh, no further business. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Good thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. Good night, everyone.